And I just realized I don't have a safety pin for this dress. Fuck. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm on my way up to Dallas for my cousin's wedding. I've stopped at this 7-Eleven, and I, I think I'm going to make my way over to a Taco Bell before I get back on the road. But while we're here, we're going to do a third episode about true crime coverage and discussion that bothers me. Because it just keeps getting worse. About uh, a year or so ago, I made a video called A Sloppy Video About Sloppy Videos in which I listed a few examples of other YouTube channels that considering the, the size of their audience and how much fucking money they were definitely making, they just never bothered to like upgrade their production quality. And one of the people that I talked about in that video, and I'm not sure if I cut him all the way out or if I never named him, but his channel is called Cinema Shogun. I, like, I took issue with his whole thing back when I found him in fall of 2021, but he, he only had between, like, 10 to 20,000 subscribers, and I didn't want to, like, drag this small YouTuber, which is hilarious coming from me. I just hit 200 subscribers. Thank you very much. But at this point, Cinema Shogun has over 70,000 subscribers and he's making enough money to upgrade his fucking production and he hasn't and he brags about it as though it's something to be proud of he uploads at least once a day between two different channels that are both monetized and he still does everything from his phone and at this point like he could have bought a camera he could have gotten a microphone like this and i have a microphone and he shouts in like this very strange cadence and he says his editing is shit and his audio is bad and he does everything on a phone but people still come to his channel because they like him. I think they'd like you more if you got a better microphone. But what I have an issue with Cinema Shogun right now is that, like, listen, I can tell he started out his channel doing some fucking movie reviews. And somewhere along the way, he realized that um, covering the Gabby Petito story back in 2021 was where all the views were at. So he pivoted and he's a true crime channel now. However, he's one of those YouTubers that is lying to his audience. And I can't stand it when YouTubers fucking lie to their audience. I was watching a recent video of his and he was using the word unalive in place of killed, murder, death, and he was claiming like, oh, it's it's because of YouTube. I can't say the right words. YouTube doesn't allow us. That's a fucking lie. And we know it. And if you're an audience member and you believe that, unsubscribe to the fucking YouTubers who are lying to you because they're lying to you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. And I'm telling you the truth because I have no fucking incentive to lie. I'm not monetized and I probably never will be. I looked through his comment section and I saw people saying unalived really YouTube? Is that like what's going on now? I left a comment and I said, I'm going to blow your mind. And I typed the word murder. And then I added, I'm not even melting. <sighs> Y'all, the man replied to my comment and he was like, it's not because I'm some special little snowflake that's afraid to say these words. It's YouTube and I have to play this game. That is not fucking true. You're allowed to say any fucking thing you want on YouTube. I know you're afraid of demonetization, right? But there's a lot of other true crime YouTubers who have fully monetized videos using the correct words instead of this made up unalive. You can say a lot of words on YouTube. Like if I wanted right now to sit here in a YouTube video and say the N word, I could. I'm not going to, obviously, but you can. I've seen people do it with still fully monetized videos. So I don't appreciate the lying. And I don't think any of the rest of the audience likes this fucking weird coded language of made up words and nonsense. It's stupid. Stop lying to your audience. All right, I'm gonna run up in this Taco Bell and I'll be back. There is a YouTube channel called True Crime Circus. It is hosted by a character who goes by the name Drip Drop. Guy's a clown, literally and figuratively. He dresses up with this ridiculous face paint for his videos. Like, also, the way he talks about crimes, he's a fool. Like, he talks about his 
case coverage as his own investigation, as though he is legitimately on the fucking case. He's just some young goober sitting at home. And he comes up with some really ridiculous theories. And he doesn't even make it clear that he's just mostly theorizing and making shit up. Because he says what he says with such conviction. You see people in his comment section being like, oh my god, you're right. Thanks for the great case coverage. But something that he said in a video I was watching earlier today really bothered me a little bit because I felt like it was the easy example of the way he does things that... Like, he just states things with not a single shred of evidence to back it up. So he was ta he was doing yet another video about the Moscow-Idaho quadruple murders. And he mentions that one of the victims got a DoorDash delivery order at, like, 4 a.m. And what he says is, we know that if she was hungry, she would have taken the food to her room and eaten it there. But the bag of food with her name on it was found in the kitchen. This means that the killer placed the DoorDash order using a prepaid phone and a Visa gift card. What the fuck are you talking about? And what do you mean, we know? What do you mean, we know if she was hungry, we, she would have eaten in her bedroom? Do you eat in your bedroom? I don't. Car on a road trip is a different story. But so it's such a massive leap from saying this girl could not have possibly eaten her food in the kitchen or taken it to the kitchen for any reason. And therefore the DoorDash order must have been placed by the fucking killer. Do you think the killer wanted the DoorDash driver to be showing up at the house at the exact same time that the killer was going to be sneaking up in there and killing people? But these people don't make any sense. They just put forth all of this ridiculous speculation, make these wild reaches and leaps to conclusion that, like, I feel like I should call their mom. And I'm not trying to, like, shit on you as a viewer. If you like any of the people that I'm talking about today, that's okay. No judgment at all. Like, I liked them enough to watch their fucking videos to the point that they annoyed me. I am sure I've had my fair share of people who've clicked on my fucking videos, looked at my channel, and gone, Ugh. The third YouTuber who's been bothering me as of late is a fellow with a channel called True Crime Time. No spaces, all one word. He seems to have created his channel like immediately when there had been an arrest made in the Moscow, Idaho murders case. And he posts a video just about every day with these like incredibly convoluted assertions and theories. He's just reaching and reaching and reaching, trying to put things together that just are ridiculous, absurd, and wrong. And what he is trying to do is connect just about every unsolved murder in North America to Brian Koberger, the suspect who has been arrested in connection with the Moscow, Idaho murders. There's no similarities in the crimes. Sure, all of these victims were stabbed, but the thing is, like, there's only a certain amount of ways to kill someone. So, yeah, there's no way Brian Koberger could have been out in Oregon stabbing people to death when he was living in Pennsylvania, or that he uh, could have also gone down to Atlanta, Georgia, and been stabbing people there. It's ridiculous. Okay, sorry, I only spent, like, the last hour lost in the jungle gym of the downtown Dallas highway system. Uh, it is a lawless wasteland, but I finally made it to my motel room. As I was saying about true crime time on YouTube, is that despite my ability to cluck everything that dude says is like complete bullshit, he says everything with such conviction. Like he states that we know things are true and that he believes certain things to be true, but like they're not. There's, they're completely unfounded. He just has these imaginings that he has decided to tell us just are, are fact. Something I found astonishing is the comment section on all of his videos. People are eating it up. They believe him. They think everything he says is like on the money and 100% true. And it's kind of dangerous because he's spreading bad information. Like he's really just dreaming up these things and then relaying them to his audience. As though, like, these are cold hard facts and we know them to be facts because he imagines them in his brain. Okay, we have our room. So, next person that I want to talk about is a channel called Ten to Life. This woman's name is Annie Elise. I like her. Typically, she's 
on the money. I want to say that she's hardworking, but I, I don't, I would say it's diligence is probably the more correct term. She's covering true crime, so she pretty much just has to like find the story and then regurgitate it on camera. But she puts out a lot of videos. She's very consistent. I appreciate her. I like her channel a lot. However, in her recent coverage of the Idaho murders, she has started to make videos. There was a Taco Bell packet in my pocket. She has, um, in her videos, begun to entertain Facebook conspiracy theories. Now, in all of this ridiculousness of the case coverage of the Idaho murders and the arrest of suspect Brian Koberger, there have been a whole hell of a lot of Facebook groups and subreddits popping up for case discussion, right? And I just realized I don't have a safety pin for this dress. Fuck. All of the Facebook groups and subreddits started popping up and there has been issues amongst them. Like, for the subreddits, nobody could agree on how they should be moderated. So it's split into like four different subreddits. And I have personally gotten two accounts suspended due to my participation in the subreddits. One of them is permanently banned from commenting or interacting at all in the subreddit. It's read only. Now, I don't use Facebook, so I didn't see any of this firsthand for myself. I'm just gonna have to tell you what was told to me, apparently. In one of these Facebook groups, there was a user whose name was Papa Roger, and he had some posts and theories in the group, right? Which eventually made everybody start pointing the finger at him and saying, sus, this happens eventually. And every single true crime case discussion forum, eventually the members start to turn on each other when they get paranoid that the killer is amongst them. But Annie Elise completely lost me when in one of her Idaho murder update videos, she started talking about this fucking Facebook group conspiracy. And that's when I'm like, oh, Annie, you're fucking losing me. I feel like she knows better than that. Why is she doing this? And I am going to mention one other thing about Annie Elise. And I, like, I know it's a petty gripe, right? And I am well aware that it is an issue in the world that people police and harp on women for the way that they speak. But my issue with Annie is not the way she speaks. My issue is that Annie, come to life, breathes through her nose very loudly. And you know, like I'm not coming for a woman because she breathes wrong, like that's ridiculous. I just sometimes wish maybe she would edit it out. Like, I know my excessive use of jump cuts is obnoxious and annoying and people don't fucking like it. But you have no idea how much time I spend trying to cut out every time I go <gasps> because I don't want to get picked apart for being a woman who breathes. All right, so we're going to the wedding. I'm probably running late due to my hang up in downtown Dallas, which is honestly extremely fucking embarrassing to be late to a wedding. Oh my God. I'm on my way back to the motel from this wedding and when I headed out of town, I'd forgotten that I, I needed to replace a headlight before leaving town. So I stopped on my way, I bought a new one, and I'm gonna change it here at this gas station. Something I also forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about the channel True Crime Time is that the day after I saw a video from him that, oh my gosh, for a small new channel, he got over 100,000 views on this terrible video. And I thought, what the fuck? How, how are people eating this up, right? The next day, I woke up and I saw our girl Pat Brown, professional criminal profiler Pat Brown, made a video about how and why True Crime Time's video was bullshit. She didn't name him, but like, she detailed why the fuck he's dumb and wrong. And everybody in the comments was like, who the fuck is this dude? I left a couple of comments replying to people telling him, it's this channel called True Crime Time, and he sucks. But I think Pat deleted my comments because that's not what she wants on her channel, I get it. She wants to be nice and kind and polite, whatever. But I'm not that fucking nice and kind and polite. So I have left some very less than uh, friendly comments on True Crime Time's videos being like, oh, you're still doing this. And I guess I've annoyed him because on my way to this gas station to change my fucking headlight, I got an alert on my phone that uh, True Crime Time clicked on my channel.
saw that I make videos, clicked on my uh, most recent video, and left me a comment that was just a bunch of Z's, implying that I am boring, I'm not interesting. And let me tell you, the stuff that I talk about in my videos is 100% true and real. I don't sit here making up all kinds of stuff, milking the stories of murder victims for fucking clicks and views. Also, he, he doesn't show his face on his channel. True Crime Time just does voiceovers. So like, I, I'm not gonna judge judge him based on his looks, but I can fucking guarantee you, I'm prettier. And I don't fucking lie to my audience. So I'm gonna go change this headlight. So we made it home from the wedding. We got the headlight change. That's all good. I'm probably gonna order some food to be delivered to my room. And if you were concerned about me bothering that other YouTuber by uh, apparently making boring videos, I don't know what to tell you. At least I'm not fucking lying and bullshitting to my audience for AdSense dollars. And no, I'm not gonna bother with this motherfucker anymore. That's how you stay at the bottom of YouTube. You know, you just, uh, you start picking fights with other small YouTubers and then you just stay at the bottom of YouTube scrapping with each other. Horrific. So, I wanna thank you for listening. I feel like forgiveness is very important, so I want you to forgive yourself for the time that you have wasted watching this video. And have a good day.